Hello Steelers and welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you how I painted these 15mm World War II Japanese infantry. These are by Command Decision or Skytrex. Uh, they're now under the control of Warlord Games. You can still buy these. Very cheap uh, and probably the best value for your Japanese infantry needs in 15mm for the Second World War. This is a platoon for Chain of Command. So this is made up of three sections, each of 12 men, uh, commanded by a junior leader. Three sections of knee mortars, you can see at the back there, with four crew, and then also two senior leaders as well. So there's quite a lot in this. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I painted each and every one of these figures. So let's get started. First things first is basing. I use 15mm diameter MDF bases uh, with a spot of super glue on and then just stick the figure on. I find anything bigger, like 19mm, like a penny size, just kind of swallows up the figure a little bit. So it's worthwhile just getting these smaller bases. You do have to pay for them, but I think it's worth it in the end. After the super glue is dried, and I sometimes use CA accelerator just to speed that up, I'll start to build up the base itself. Uh, as you can see, the figure's base stands proud of the MDF base. So I'm using here polyfiller and a small flat headed screwdriver just to build up a small amount there. Just see the actual base of the figure is not seen. You don't have to do this, but it does look a lot better if you do. If you're basing them multiple figures, you might wait until the figures are actually painted to do this. Uh, but I generally try to do this first off, so then you don't get any of this polyfiller on the figures that you've painted. Then I will prime the figure. I'll do this either with a spray can, uh, a rattle can, or with a brush anyway. I'm using whites here. I use different kinds of primers. For 15mm, I'd probably go white just because you want some of the colours on top of this to look a bit bright on the tabletop, even from three feet away. Uh, if you're using a rattle can, then obviously you want to probably do quite a lot of figures at once. Uh, and you can also see that I've actually stuck the figure using blue tack onto the top of an old Vallejo bottle here as well, just to help me hold it. I do apologise, it's slightly out of focus there, but you get the idea. I'm literally just using a large brush to dab on the white paint, so we've got our primer. Once your primer is dry, which we shouldn't take too long, I start to do the uniform. Now you can be quite messy at this, this is just a block colouring stage. Uh, these figures are meant to be seen at three feet away, so don't worry too much about getting any details at this stage, because we can always go back and cover them up again. But I will just basically block colour in the uniforms of these. Now I'm using green ochre, which is a Vallejo colour. A lot of people I've seen have used Japanese uniform by Vallejo. Now this is actually the wrong colour for Japanese uniforms. Believe it or not. Uh, so I have did a little bit of uh, research on the internet a long time ago when I first started painting Japanese. And I found that green ochre was probably the closest to a Japanese faded uniform. So I'd suggest getting that if you can, rather than just going straight for the Vallejo Japanese uniform. Because it's a lot yellower, a lot brighter. But as you can see, I'm just using a slightly larger brush here just to get into all the nooks and crannies. Uh, I'm not bothering about all the details at this point because they're just going to layer over the top. So a nice easy stage and then I'll hit all the flesh parts so this is the hands and the faces I'm using Vallejo's sunny skin tone here uh, Japanese flesh is slightly darker than uh, Caucasian flesh so if you wanted to use a slightly darker shade for this you could do uh, I'm quite happy with the sunny skin tone it seems to work quite well again from um, I want to use some slightly brighter colors because they're only 15 mil and I want to see them from about three foot away but another quite easy stage just making sure that you block paint all the uh, the hands and any flesh that you can see then I move on to painting the base. Now this is with Vallejo's Flat Earth. I will put a list and uh, affiliate links in the description below so you'll see exactly what paints I'm using. But I'll just paint the base here nice and simply, again using quite a slightly larger brush just to get this out of the way it's done then. Uh, quite nice and easy, just make sure you cover all those white spots and the edge of the MDF as well. This just helps seal the MDF as well uh, and also it just gives them something to stand on of course. And this guy is wearing a helmet, so I'm painting that in English uniform by Vallejo again. Uh, this is a great colour for Japanese painted equipment. So anything like grenades or the small knee mortars that they use, anything like that, I'll paint it in English uniform. It's a really nice colour for this. 
Then I move on to the canvas equipment. In this case, it's a bag that's slung across his back and I'm painting this in stone gray. It's quite a nice faded canvasy color. If there's anything else on there, you could paint them in that. In these, for these figures, it's only really this. I'll paint the front strap as well. Just being careful because you've already got that first unicorn form color. I'll also paint the uh, straps on the rifles as well at this point in this same color. Then next I'm painting beige brown and this is for all the leather equipment. So this is like the bags and the satchels and things that he has around him, also belts and anything like that. I also paint the weapons, so the uh, rifle butts, the stocks and the rifles in beige brown uh, because it's quite a nice wood colour as well. I also paint boots as well because they are leather in this case. Uh, the Japanese uniforms don't just seem to have uh, too many different colours on them. They're quite a, uh, a drab uh, uniform really, uh, unlike say like the Germans or anything like that. So they, you can actually paint these up pretty quickly, uh, which is a bonus when you're painting quite a lot of them like I was. Then it's gun metal and we're almost finished block painting at this point. Uh, so I'm just painting in the metal parts of the weapons like the bolt itself and the ends of the barrel, that kind of thing. So with all the block colouring done, it's my favourite stage. This is the Agrax Earth Earthshade stage. So we literally just take this straight out of the bottle, the uh, Games Workshop wash, splash it all over the figures. I know it's a bit horrific to uh, completely cover your figure in, uh, in this wash, but uh, believe me, the next stage uh, will really bring it back to life again. Once the Agrax has dried, it's time to bring the figure back to life with highlighting. And here I'm just using the base colour of skin, uh, Sunny Skin Tone to uh, just go over some of the highlights on the faces and the arms again. The next highlight is Green Okra. This is just going back onto the uniform. Again, I'm using that base colour that I used before, not a lighter colour of it, just the original base. The Agrax is acting here as our middle range uh, tone for any highlighting and shading purposes. So we have the original colour uh, which has then been darkened slightly by the Agrax, then we have the Agrax itself in all the uh, bits and pieces, uh, folds and things, and then this just over the top. And again I'm just touching up ever so slightly the higher folded areas, the creases and things that you'll see on the uniform. And then same again with the stone grey just over any cloth equipment, so it's that bag and the straps on the front. A very nice and simple again, just hitting that real highlight, whichever part is highest on the detail, just hit that part. Very simple. And my last highlight is the metal painted bit. So this is the helmet on this particular chap. I'll paint the centre of the top and then also the rim just around the outside. Again, with English uniform. No need to lighten it, just paint that base colour on. And then pretty much you are finished with all the highlights. So it's time to varnish them. Unfortunately, I didn't video me varnishing them, but I use Windsor & Newton Matte Spray Varnish, Professional Artist Varnish. And then when it, the varnish is dry, it's time to finish off his base. So here I'm using an undiluted PVA glue, white glue, and just spreading this around on his base. I do apologise, I should have kept this in shot a little bit, but you can just see there where the uh, PVA glue is spread all over the base of the figure. And then using static grass, I'll just sprinkle this over the top onto the PVA. You can put this on with an applicator. To be honest, I don't bother. Once you've blown on it, it kind of stands up a little bit on its own anyway. And there we have it, a full platoon of Japanese infantry, all painted in this same way. As I say, the Japanese don't take very long, simply because they are uh, quite muted uniforms, especially at 15 mil. We're not painting Golden Demon winners here, we're painting tabletop figures, and these look fine from three fields away, which is my basic rule anyway. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, please do tell me in the comments below. Uh, tell me how you paint your Japanese figures. Uh, and uh, if you can, please do check out my Patreon. Have a check of the other videos. There's more painting videos here. There's also after action reports. And these guys will see action at some point on a tabletop coming soon. So thanks for watching and please subscribe if you haven't already.